TFT comp names used to be really, really weird. Uh, so what I have pulled up right here is TFTacademy.com. It's something that Dish Soap, one of the best players in North America, and Froden, like content creator, commentator extraordinaire, he's been in like so many different gaming spaces. But so they make this every every week. They update this tier list every week. It has all these comps on it, right? So if you look right here, if we click on this, S tier is Invoker Ash, Ash Flex, not, not Ash Flex, Ash Flex, right? And so it, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's just Invokers and Ash, that's the name of the comp. Easy peasy, same thing for Syndra, Dryad Faded Syndra, Fortray Shot Kaisa, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, Azir Fast 9 AP. So basically right now, in current TFT, in the current TFT landscape, how we name comps is pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's whatever the main carry of the comp is, the thing you put the most items on generally, it's their primary synergies, and sometimes it involves how you play it, right? Like in the case of Azir, it's Azir Fast 9 AP, and Fast 9 being how you play it. And that's super reasonable. It's not that interesting, but it, I think it gives a pretty good idea of what the comp, how, how it works, what you put items on, how it functions more or less, right? Uh, maybe that's how it functions, but more so like what, what it's made up with. Uh, back in the day, and I was thinking about this because yesterday I did a video on set 5, which if you haven't seen it yet, it'll be linked at the end of this video, uh, and it is pretty fun, You're just looking back at, at some old nostalgic stuff. And in the course of that video, I realized that, man, comp names really did used to be weird as hell. Uh, so right now, right, we have these very normal name conventions, I have a few comps pulled up from set 3, set 4, and set 5, and we can just talk about them a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the names how they're actually a little bit more indicative of what the comp does than these comps, believe it or not. Um, obviously these give you a good idea of, of what's on the board, but it's a little less descriptive of how a board wins a fight, right? It'd be like, if, basically it'd be like saying like, instead of Invoker Ash Flex, it was Invoker Ash Spews on the whole board. Cause she kind of does that like pew pew thing, right? Basically it'd be something like that. So we'll start off with set three. And so the first comp we want to look at, has to do with two units in particular. And if you are, if you've been in TF, the TFT scene for a while, you probably have a pretty good idea of what I'm getting at here. But uh, there are two units in the Blade Master synergy. And they're, they're two bros, you could say, almost. Uh, Mr. Master Yi here, who says for five seconds, Master Yi gains massively increased movement speed, heals for a percentage of his maximum health each second, and deals bonus true damage with his basic attack. So basically he's an auto attack centric, uh, Blade Master gives you more attack speed, and he's an auto attack centric, like true damage guy. Uh, as well as Yasuo, who was kind of CC, just a good synergy bot for the Yi. And so this comp was aptly named, you know, was it called Master Yi Yasuo Reroll? Was it called Master Yi Yasuo Rebel? No, it was called Bang Bros. <laughs> uh, on broadcast, it was called Blade Bros, but we all knew it was called Bang Bros. And so I have a video of a fight from Bang Bros. Uh, thank you, Toast, for this video. And just to give you an idea of what it looked like, right? Master Yi with RFC, it gave increased range. You'd want AP on him, he'd do a bunch of true damage, he'd like stack it up, and it was like pretty straightforward. He's destroying a mech here, right? Um, you would reroll for it, like you'd, you'd play it on six and the six and seven. And the thing about the name, which I kind of like about this one, is that it, it's, I mean, if you look at this this damage chart, right? Two things to damage here, Master Yi and Yasuo. They worked in conjunction, they were their bros, and they were banging, you know? It, it was a good descriptor for the comp, it was actually was. Obviously it was not the best naming sense maybe in terms of uh, level of appropriateness but it was good uh second one i want to look at has to do with uh let's see here what, what, what did i even write so this one has to do with four cost jinx let me see if i can find her this is actually in 3.5 if i'm not mistaken which this might not be the right yeah this is not the right one pulled up for it um, basically, so it was Jinx, and there is a five cost on the board. It's basically two units, right? It was this four cost Jinx, who basically just a backline DPS unit, in this Gangplank, who basically, what he is, is he's a Demolitionist, which makes it so he gets a big stun on his ult, which is basically like a board-wide, big AoE, just nuke. Uh, and yeah, so everything in that area would not get damaged only, but if you have Demolitionist in it, it would get stunned as well. And so the point of the board was basically that, uh... <laughs> you would just not do much until all of a sudden, like the whole board just pops from the GP ulting, everything getting CC'd and getting a bunch of resets and just going fucking crazy, like wild, wild. Um, might need to edit that out. So here's a, here's a, 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 a clip of it. Uh, <laughs> if you couldn't guess that the name was gonna be kind of bad, 
it is pretty bad. The name of the comp is Fake Taxi. <laughs> Which is right there with Bang Bros. Is one of the worst named comps of all time, maybe. Uh, the reason being, though, and, and I think this one is maybe more of a stretch, but I think it's still not the worst naming sense in terms of under, like understanding what the board does. Is that it's kind of like okay, you have these guys in the front who who they they kind of show up, they do their thing, and then all of a sudden this thing just goes kills the whole board right out of nowhere. It's kind of like the decoy almost, or like that's kind of maybe bit of, maybe a bit of a stretch. This one I think was was more so just people having a bad naming sense and wanting to you know mess around with names but still one of the most uh iconic names in tft history for comps i think so in set four this is one that i think i i, I chose specifically because it is probably the worst named comp on the list uh fair warning it's pretty it's pretty vulgar it is called uh it had multiple names as well just like bang bros it's called cum shot koi fish is what i knew it by uh it, it could also be called, um, it could also be called Bubble Trouble on broadcast. So I think a common thing here is that you'd see that a lot of these, these, t these comps had broadcast names, you know, like unofficial broadcast names or like official broadcast names, I should say. And then their unofficial name, which like most of the community called them. And so this was, this was a NAMI comp. And the thing is, it's not too bad in the descriptor on what it, what it does. And so the reason why it was called this is that Ludens was an item in set four set four and so what ludens did is whenever they cast their spell basically you would just do a bunch of, of extra magic damage and if a unit was crowd controlled if they had any kind of stun on them any kind of like damage or like attack speed slow or anything it would do a bunch of extra damage to them and so the reason why you would play this on nami is well first i'll, I'll just let you see the fight and, and see what she does right so this is double ludens nami she is mage so she casts twice you can see, uh, you can see them hovering it, and so when she casts, she CCs what she casts, and so when you cast, stuff just die. You can see that stuff just dies immediately because she has two bubbles. They both get CC. Then Ludens hits, you know, the little things, and all these little droplets just come off and out and wrecking people. Honestly, a pretty descriptive name. Again, a pretty terrible name too, but it, it did definitely gave you a good idea of what the comp did, how it won a fight, right? I think that's what we're getting at here is that a lot of these old comp names, while they didn't necessarily tell you it was on the board. They told you how the board won a fight, which I think was pretty cool. So that was just another one that's like a pretty ridiculous name, but pretty descriptive. And then here's one as well that had, again, this is the last one to look at today. This was one I, I talked about a little bit in the set five video. But this one is a Varus Pantheon comp on broadcast, often referred to as Bulldozer, uh, off broadcast, often referred to as Varus's Golden Shower. And so, <laughs> well, this one worked, is Varus was a two cost who said, let me grab him real quick. Varus was a two cost, which said, uh, you know, he, he ults on a, on a little AOE, and then any of your own units in there, any opponent units took damage, any of your own units in there would get bonus magic damage on their, on their attacks. And it was a pretty decent amount of bonus magic damage. And if you had something that would attack really fast, it would do a lot of damage with that. And so Pantheon, the reason why Pantheon was so good with this is that Pantheon had this like little, he like hide behind his shield and just like start, you know, doing his thing with his spear and it would proc like a billion times because just, you know, it, it counted as like a, a bunch of different auto attacks. Um, and so I'll watch a fight here with you. You can see Emily Wang was playing it. And you see that Varus just, oh, shadow items are here. Oh my God. So Varus casts on the Pantheon and then Pan as Pantheon's casting and then all of a sudden, like the whole board just starts dying. And like you see all that, that magic damage coming out on the Pantheon, who does no magic damage himself, by the way. Um, so all of Varus's damage is gonna pop up on the right. It's all shows as Varus's damage, but it's like Pantheon basically applying Varus's ult, which is a really cool way to win a fight. It's like a very, very cool way to win a fight. And again, like, yeah, you just kind of cover your team and the arrows and they all attack things and it works out pretty well. Honestly, pretty descriptive. Again, one thing, I mean, you know, I'm feeling broken here at this point, but a pretty terrible name that actually did fit the comp pretty well. And so, basically, I think, you know, is it a problem that we've moved on from these kinds of names? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, you know, these names are <laughs> certainly a little more evocative of how a comp may play, but they also are, are like not very good in a landscape where TFT is becoming a more popular and a more like, you know, 
mainstream game and, and the, the player base is getting broader and, and maybe younger players are coming in i think it's good that these kind of names are not in the game anymore what i do think i would like to see more in comp names though as i'd like comp names that literally tell you how the board works right because invoker ash flex I guess Ash kills things, but it doesn't really tell me what to expect when I see a fight. Uh, you know, like Azir Fast 9 AP, maybe it's like, I don't know, something about beams or something about like chicken, a KFC. Maybe, what, was there any five costs that have F or C in the name? I'm sure there are. Basically, right, like you could, you could have a little bit more oomph, I think, like he fries the team. I don't know. But um, that is to say that certainly I think old comp names, while they were really weird, uh, and, and really should not come back and then that style and that form I would say uh, I think the the way they described how a board played a fight was really cool And it's something that I would like to see come back in comp names rather than stuff like like this and again like this This is fine, but We can do better than this as, as a community. I feel like for making comps sound cool. Yeah, that, that's my thoughts for the day There's just some there's some food for thought So uh, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll be back next time. Peace. Bye. Bye